Jay, uh, obviously disappointments uh, being heard used by a lot of your players, your GM. Your players talked a lot about how the one thing they feel, they want to make it harder on the opposition. They don't want to gift them goals. So I'm assuming that's some music to your ears as a coach. How do you help build a plan? You know, because Ken Holland thinks anybody can play defense. It's just about commitment. So how do you help them have more of a consistent commitment in that one area? Well, you asked a couple different things there. You asked about, um, you know, not gifting and then a consistent uh, commitment. A commitment to not gifting. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, I think that's important to point out. I mean, um, you know, there were moments for us in games where we certainly can be better. It could be a 90-second span here. It could be um, shift after a goal here, th those type of things. I think... Uh, how do you build a plan? I think you carefully review everything that's happened. Um, you spend a summer um, really looking at uh, new ways of doing things uh, that are appropriate for personnel that you have. And then you implement that over an 82-game schedule so that in the playoffs, um, those habits that you've built over that schedule show up under pressure. You've been in organizations, Detroit and San Jose, where you had high expectations like this group, and some years it didn't happen. No. What did you learn from that? And do you sense that even though your team technically went farther last year, that the disappointment, it seems more this year. So how do you, how do you use that as a positive as a coach? Yeah, I've been fortunate to be, you know, in my 18 years uh, with three different organizations to be around some really good players and some really good teams, some um, that or one that reached its ultimate goal, but a lot of teams that knocked on the door. And, um, you know, I think in situations like um, us falling short this year, and that is what we did. We fell short of what our expectation internally was. Um, that's never uh, something fun to go through. Um, you know, I think Ken used the word devastated. I would echo that. Um, you know, I think you, know, you, you go through stages. The first one is feeling that way. Um, the next one is learning how to repurpose that disappointment. Um, and the way you do that is by learning some lessons and you use that experience to serve as your motivational fuel. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, you know, I mean... It, you know, when you're in a workout and it's the middle of June, um, that helps push you forward. Um, when um, maybe your family or friend group is pulling you in a certain direction, um, you have this experience or this pit in your stomach uh, to help serve as motivational fuel for um, the things that need to happen in order uh, to set ourselves up to have a really good training camp, which is the first step. Those are, are all part of the process of learning um, lessons along the way, of gaining experiences, sometimes painful ones. Uh, but in the end, you hope the payoff is, is that if you continue to knock on the door, you continue to knock on the door, um, and you learn some of those hard lessons um, that one day that door opens. And I've been fortunate to be around one team where the, that has happened. How would you assess your own performance in your first full year, the grind to get through it all in the regular season, and then uh, your performance that you thought you did in the playoffs? Well, the first thing I would say is that I'm in it with our players. Our coaching staff is in it with our players. We're um, utterly disappointed that we're not preparing for round three today. Utterly disappointed. Um, if you're going to talk about our year kind of big picture wise, it was an interesting year. I thought there were some uh, challenges that our group overcame. Um, I saw a group uh, weather the adversity of having at one point four or five top nine forwards out of the lineup and figuring out ways to compete on a nightly basis given the grinds of an NHL schedule. I saw our team take a real step in the month of January, which has traditionally been a tough month for our organization and our team. I saw a team that really take off post-Christmas 
Um, and then uh, the way uh, you know we took a step post trade deadline, and then to finish the regular season 14-0 and one and challenge um, the Vegas Golden Knights for the first spot in the Western Conference. I saw a lot of positives. I saw a lot of positive narratives and storylines for our team. Um, you know, including the emergence of certain individual players. Um, you know, I saw our team post back-to-back 50-win -back seasons since the mid mid 80s. Uh, those are all positive things, but uh, I can tell you that the coaching staff, the head coach, myself, and our assistants are in it with our players, and we share that same disappointment. We share that same pit in our stomach, and uh, we will leave no stone unturned in trying to help make our team better over the summertime. What did you learn about yourself, and what can you bring from this experience to move forward? Yeah, well, I think any time uh, you continue to play hockey or coach hockey in the month of May, um, you're learning lessons along the way. And, uh, you know, last year I think we played until mid or beginning of June anyways, and this year it's the middle of May. Um, there's some good, and there are some things that, um, you know, we're going to use. We're just like our players. Uh, what did I learn about myself? Um, you know, I learned how much of an appreciation I have for being the head coach of this team, this organization, how much respect I have for our players. Uh, but I can tell you that when we said goodbye to the group at large yesterday, you know, that was... Uh, the end of 236 days together, working together, um, grinding together, um, and we all, to a man, felt that it was too early. Jay, just over here, I, I know you weren't here for the first half of, of last season, but, but Zach Hyman was out here yesterday just saying that, you know, we, we can't, basically paraphrase, that we, you know, we can't leave everything to the second half, and you guys had yeah. a very good second half last year with you, very good second half this year, but in saying that, obviously, you finished second in the, in the conference and two points out of first. So where are you on kind of getting out of the gate uh, maybe a little bit better, or does it matter, I guess, in the yeah, way that you guys finish so strong? I, I think it's important to get out of the gate uh, well. I would say that our team was 7-3 and three in the first 10 games, and then, you know, there were some extenuating circumstances with uh, Vander Kane getting stepped on and having that horrific injury, and then... I would also say that, um, you know, with with Yamamoto going down, McLeod, Fogel, those guys uh, get hurt. You don't plan for that. I thought we did what we had to do to continue to gain points and survive that adversity, and that set us sel set ourselves up uh, as we move down the stretch. But I think the game plan is always to get out of the gate as well as you can. In the end, uh, I think we had 109 points and one team finished ahead of us in the Western Conference. And if you were gonna go by regular season uh, regulation wins, we were second only to the Boston Bruins. So there was some good there. Can we be better in the regular season? We can be. Um, and part of that is making sure that um, your start isn't just seven and three out of the gate, it's over a longer period of time. And I just wonder if you'd be able to share your message to a couple players that um, you know maybe their roles kind of diminished as the season went on, and that's Jack Campbell and Dylan Holloway. What, what would your message be to those players in terms of you know going forward and for next season? Mm, I didn't see Dylan Holloway's role diminish. I saw him get sent to Bakersfield and then get hurt in his first game in Bakersfield. Um, and for Jack Campbell, I, you know, I think Jack, um, Jack's Cam Jack Campbell came into this uh, season, um, you know, as a free agent signing. Uh, maybe didn't go his personal way uh, out of the gate. I thought we stuck by him, um, you know, and I thought the emergence of Stuart Skinner kind of alleviated some of the, um, you know, not the issues, but um, Jack's uh, start. Uh, so uh, on the one hand, you had uh, Jack who maybe didn't play as well as he wanted to out of the gate, and then Stuart Skinner emerged as a, um, a real positive story. Uh, I thought Jack had moments in the season where, um, you know, he really stepped up. I thought uh, specifically um, in January, um, Stuart uh, ended up, him and his wife uh, had a child, and that opened the door for Jack to kind of make an impact on our team. 
Um, he, I think he at 1.19 games in a row for us. Um, you know, and I think there's there are positive points to Jack's year, and the biggest positive is um, the way he conducted himself, um, the way he found a way to win games and contribute to a team that won 50 of them. Um, you know, I think him working through that that little bit of adversity sets him him up for a real big summer and will serve as his motivational, his personal motivational fuel uh, heading into next year. Um, several of your players talked yesterday, McDavid and Dreisaitl together. I wonder if you saw their availability and, you know, no, Connor. No, I didn't. See, no, maybe you can enlighten me. Connor just expressed, you know, that what, what's been built here in his time, he takes a lot of pride in and the value of them trying to win this together as a group. He said that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. So what do you sort of sense from the guys that have been here through that timeline, how hard this was for them, but maybe how galvanizing it can be moving forward. Yeah, I, I agree with Connor and, and I agree with your question. And I think that is the message that, that most of our players would carry forward. It was the message that our, our leader, Ken Holland, walked into the room with, um, you know, and shared some of his personal experiences uh, having won four Stanley Cups himself and how some of the disappointments along the way served as um, learning experiences to set the the group up going forward. Um, I think everybody here is uh, disappointed that we're not playing um, but it has to go farther than just being disappointed it has to go to learning some valuable lessons along the way. Um, the National Hockey League is an unbelievable test on a night in, night out basis. The tournament to win the Stanley Cup trophy uh, is a two month uh, grind where certain things have to show up uh, over a two month period and in your quest to vanquish four worthy opponents. So I think, you know, along the way, some of the scars or some of the disappointments end up um, serving you well if you continue to knock on the door. Uh, you have to put yourself in position to knock on the door, and, and uh, you want to make sure that... Um, those lessons aren't lost on you. You cannot be deaf to the lessons. And I think um, if I was to speak to our leadership group or the people that have been here for a long time, the one thing I know about them is that they're proud, um, they're conscientious, and uh, they're hungry to win. Jay, you beat Vegas three out of four in the regular season, so why yep. figure in hindsight that they beat you four out of six in the playoffs? Now, is there something that they did that either surprised you or or you, did your team just fall down in certain areas? Yeah, if I look at that regular season, we were 3-0-1, Jim, against them. Um, one of our wins was in uh, overtime, uh, and that was the one that was in overtime, I think was kind of late November-ish. Um, that was the only game Mark Stone played in for their team. Um, you know, I think... It, the team, teams grow and change and evolve over the year. Um, you know, I think in our, you know, down in that game in November, we let in three goals, I think. Um, I think we went in in January and, and maybe let in three goals. Um, we lost one at home here in overtime. I think we let in four that game. And then uh, I think the last one in Vegas, I think we won 7-4, and it was kind of, we got up on them early. Um, you know, their, uh, their team changed over time. Our team changed over time. Um, I thought there were moments in the series uh, that specifically we can be better in. Uh, individual moments, uh, uh, sequences in a game where we can be better. Um, you know, Part of the coaching staff's job is to go through that series with a fine tooth comb and do our work uh, to ensure that that doesn't happen again. 
The one thing I would say is that we lost to a team who finished higher than us in the standings. That's a 111-point team. That's a program over there that I think has, has gone pretty deep for the last uh, six years or so. Um, they're a worthy opponent. They did a lot of good things. I think for us, um, our, our um, disappointment lay in some of the moments that we feel we can handle better. You mentioned uh, lessons learned. Looking back, was there anything, any tactic or anything as a coach that you would like to take back and said, oh, that didn't work? Well, I think, um, I think, yeah, I'm not going to stand up here and, and say, um, you know, we just have to do what we do. We have to do it better. I think part of um, evolving as a team is adding layers to your game. Um, you know, if I were to look um, at the games, I think we had the lead in, in every one of them. So we were doing some, some good things uh, as well. Uh, there were moments that we think we can handle better. Is that a tactic? Is it individual execution? That's part of the work that we're going to do. Um, we're serious about it. Um, and as I said, we are in this with our players. This is not uh, pointing fingers in any one way. This is about how do we collectively uh, come up with solutions and find answers. Jay, Zach Hyman mentioned yesterday that the one area he felt, if, if there was one area offensively he'd like the group to improve on is maybe simplifying things sometimes, put pucks on net, bang home rebounds, deflections. You look yep. at some of the goals that Vegas got, especially in game six, which yep. was just from that. Um, how do you help the team do that then as a coach next season to incorporate that more? Yeah, I think right from day one you start incorporating habits that are going to help you have success in, the, in May and June. Now I'd also say this, um, I think we were the highest scoring team during the regular season. Um, I look at that uh, series versus Vegas and some of the fancy stats, fancy stats, would tell you that what we created and what our finish was. I think we were eighth in finishing in the second round. So I look at what we created and what we finished. Sometimes that's um, things that you're doing. Sometimes it's things the other team does as well, and they might do some, some good things as well. Um, I think you worry when you don't get the chances. Um, I look at that game six. I think the final shots on net were 41 to 22. I think in the first period, the shots on net were 15 to seven. There were things that we were doing um, that uh, maybe we didn't finish at the rate we wanted to, but there was some good things. But all of that said, we are sitting here today disappointed. We have to honestly self-assess every aspect of our game that would be one of them and uh, not to make excuses but obviously fans are always curious about the finishing factor yep. uh, you know warren fogel mentioned yesterday he's getting an mri on his wrist he'd be playing with an injury for a bit uh, yep. vander kane didn't want to say he didn't deny he had a broken finger can you outline just some you know hyman kane was nugent hopkins injured were some other guys banged up yeah i'll leave that to the the individuals, because in the end, what I don't want to do is make excuses. Our players don't make excuses. Our coaching staff doesn't make excuses. Our manager stood up here. He doesn't make excuses. If individuals want to share that, I'll let them share that. Rest assured that it's playoff hockey. There were numerous uh, bumps and bruises, but every team has them. Um, and for us, we're not going to make excuses. I want to ask about Stuart Skinner. Yep. Obviously, rode him the whole way through in the playoffs, and it was more hockey than he'd played during the year consecutively. In hindsight, yep. did, do you think that fatigue had a, a factor in what happened with Skinner? And, you know, do you, do you feel like maybe you rode him a little bit too hard considering, you know, what he'd done? Well, what I think is that those are things that we're going to revisit. Um, I would say that Stewart's narrative on the season was probably one of the best things about our team this year. Um, made the All-Star game. First time uh, a drafted and developed goaltender, I think won 29 games for our organization. Uh, he helped calm some of the waters back there. Um, you know, we, we down the stretch, we were competing 
for uh, the first overall spot in the conference, which has some advantages, including having home ice in the second round. Um, you know, but those are things that we do think about. I think the one thing with Stewart is that he's a young man. He's capable of handling a heavy workload. I personally saw that. I thought there were, were moments in the playoffs that just like every other player and just like the coaches, he would like to have back. Um, I thought the games that he was pulled in, it wasn't all on him. It was sometimes on the team. And the one thing he showed was a bounce back ability and he proved that over time. So from game four in LA to game five. Uh, in, in winning game five here uh, from game three versus Vegas and in winning game four. So he's proven that over time. That's also a belief or an experience that I have uh, seen at a different level with him. Um, in the end, our team lost the series and those are all things that we think about, talk about, uh, examine, discuss, study, uh, and in will eventually inform a lot of the, the things that we do moving forward. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everybody a good summer. Thank you very much.